Hi, Joe Alden, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, the fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook, plus designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. A recent survey of 11,000 grocery stores has found that fully 40% are sold out of baby formula. More mothers are breastfeeding their babies these days, but most still find themselves needing baby formula at one point or another in their child's first six months of life. Shortages, including baby formula shortages, cause panic and are just another symptom of a society that's unprepared in the face of disasters and other upheavals. In this case, the formula shortage is thought to be due partly to a major recall by one of the three companies that makes the product, Abbott Labs. Recently, several infants were hospitalized with Chronobacter sakazakii, a bacterium that was identified in the company's Michigan plant. Supply chain issues may also be a factor in the current crisis. If you have Abbott products in your pantry, the Food and Drug Administration asks that you check to see if it might be at risk for contamination. Recalled lots can be identified. Check to see if the first two digits of the product code are 22 through 37. The code contains K8 SH or Z2 and has an expiration date later than April 1st, 2022. Abbott's website has a search feature that allows you to plug in your lot numbers to see if it's part of the recall. In the meantime, some pediatricians say that Pedialyte is an option for about 24 hours or so to keep the baby hydrated. Others say the toddler formula will do for a few days while you're hunting for the right stuff. Infants over one year of age on formula can slowly transition to whole milk. A few pediatricians say small amounts of cow's milk can even be given to babies six months of age or older for a short time. The brands removed from supermarket shelves include popular brands like Similac, Alimentum, and Elicare. Pediatricians are reported as suggesting substitutes for recalled products, as you'll see below scrolling down on your screen. If these options are not available, there's not a lot of advice that the government or the pediatric establishment give it as alternatives. They recommend continuing to breastfeed or returning to breastfeeding if the infant was recently weaned. Another suggestion is to search for formula in places other than supermarkets, pharmacies for example. Look in areas where the infant population is low, such as maybe senior communities. You may find more available there. Of course, if you can find your baby's formula online from a trusted source, use that avenue. Other options include breast milk banks and support organizations like the Healthy Mothers Healthy Babies Program or the La Leche League in many cities. If you do find a supply though, the government says not to get more than a month's worth because that's just greedy. Needless to say, advice like this goes against the grain for us preparedness folk. The opinion of the FDA, CDC, and almost all pediatricians is that no formula shortage should result in the use of cow's milk in very young infants, or plant milks like soy or almond, watering down existing formula, or making your own. They claim that all these options are dangerous and can overload a infant's kidneys or cause electrolyte imbalances that can lead to seizures. The CDC states that homemade formula recipes you'll find online can contain harmful ingredients or be contaminated. They say to ignore those mommy blogger recipes. Some sites actually advise mothers to borrow a can of formula from a neighbor. Not exactly a long-term solution. Of course, families with infants should listen to their pediatricians. But what happens when the approved commercial substitutes are sold out? What if a disaster knocks out formula manufacturing altogether? In the old days, there were nursemaids, now called breastfeeding surrogates, but that doesn't seem to be a popular career path for many people these days. If the formula shortage continues, you might have little choice but to buck the pediatric establishment and make your own. I'm not a pediatrician, and I haven't been in a situation where I needed formula and there was none to be had. Having said that, you have to do something if you can't find formula and your baby needs to eat. Here are a number of links to various mommy blogger, yes, mommy blogger, homemade recipes, none of which I admit that I've tested myself. I'm so old that the doctor sent my mother home with one of the formula recipes that you're going to find in these links. I survived, and so did many millions of other babies using what some today are calling dangerous alternatives. It should be noted that no formula recipe using honey is safe for infants due to the risk of botulism. For now, of course, it may take a little searching to find the formula that you need, but be sure to consider what you do if there was none to be had. That's part of being prepared, and if we all had a plan of action for every contingency, we'd be a prepared nation that could weather any shortage.
This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, do this old country doctor a favor and check out our entire line of quality medical kits and supplies at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.